All right, hi everyone. Welcome back to the CS Classroom. Today what we're going to do is we're going to continue building a vaccine passport system. So if you remember the last tutorial, what we did is we um, allowed the user to register. Um, and we did that by um, writing some code in our views.py, um, where we have all our routes. So we were able to register um, a doctor and then validate that doctor's reg registration while they're filling out the form using some JavaScript in validateusers.js. So today what we're going to do is we're going to add a login and logout system to our application. Uh, my initial plan was to use JavaScript again to validate the login form, but I kind of realized to an extent that was overkill. So what we're going to do is we're going to allow the um, we're going to allow a user that's already been registered to log in, and if they have if they successfully logged in, we'll send them to a page where we'll list out some patients, and we'll go ahead and create that. That's going to be patients.html. Um, so it lists out all the patients that are connected to that particular doctor. And um, if not, then we're going to send them a message called a flash message. So we're going to send them back to this page, and we're going to show them a message that their password is incorrect or something to that effect. Um, so that's actually not going to require us to do any JavaScript, but we are going to have to learn a few new concepts today, um, including flash messages uh, and sessions. So let's take a look at the HTML, and let's see where we're at at this point. So right now, um, right here, we've got login form, and that corresponds to this right here, just purely this, um, this form right here with the submit button. Um, and when we click submit, we're getting sent to the login doctor route in views.py. So let's open this up on the side right here. Um, okay, so we've got to open up, open back up main.html, add this right here, okay. So we've got this form right here. We've got login form. And whenever we click the submit button, we're getting sent to a login doctor right here. We've already written out some of this route. Um, based on what we've done in the last video, that should kind of make sense. So we're getting our form, which is going to be this one. We're getting our user, which is a doctor user. And then we're checking whether that, uh, whether the password for that user matches what was entered into the form. Okay. So what we're going to do today is we're going to add on to this, and then we're also going to add some um, logout functionality. So the idea is that once the user logs in, um, they'll get sent to patients to patients.html, and there they will be able to log out. So all right, cool. Um, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to add um, some stuff to login doctor to make it more robust and more like an actual uh, login system. So. Let's go ahead and let's see what that's going to look like. OK, so right here, um, so far, this is pretty good. Mm, let's actually just, we don't need this right now. So this is actually pretty good. Um, one thing that we want to add here is we want to add the concept of sessions. So basically right here, what's going to happen in this if statement is if the doctor's, a doctor is successfully logged in, so this returns true, then we're going to redirect to the patient's route right down here. Um, before we do that, what we want to do is we want to store the doctor's ID in a session. So we're going to create, well, actually, what we need to do first is we need to import session from, um, from, our, from our Flask object, or Flask module, rather. And we're going to use that. So what session is, is for the duration in which a user, um, a particular user, is accessing the website, um, this session variable exists purely for that user. So for example, let's say that I log into this website right here. So I log in right here. Um, what we're going to do is as soon as I log in, we're going to check whether my password is correct. And then we're going to do session doctor. We're going to create a dictionary equals doctor.id. So anywhere else in my application, um, we can access this doctor, the doctor ID of the person who's logged in um, to conduct any sort of operations. So what this what session really is, is kind of a temporary object that corresponds to a user that is logged in. And every user that logs in will have their own session um, that will correspond to their particular um, to their particular client and their particular particular login session. So this is unique to everyone that logs into um, this application. And after a certain amount of time, which we can specify, we haven't really specified that. Um, usually it would be you know five to 10 minutes 
um, if the session variable has stopped being used, then that'll just be deleted from our system. So right now we're just gonna focus on creating the session variable. So as soon as the doctor logs in, their ID gets stored in the session so that it can be used in the rest of the application um, while they're logged in. And then we are sent to patients. Now, what we're gonna add here that besides sessions is we're going to say um, if the password is incorrect, so if this doesn't evaluate to true, right here we just have return error. Um, but what we wanna do instead is we want to, we're gonna go up here and import flash. And I'll explain what a flash message is in a second. Um, so we're gonna import flash, and then we're going to effectively show the user a message that says flash uh, password was incorrect. Password was incorrect, um, and then return error. Well, actually no, then we're gonna return them back to the main page with this message. And I'll show you how we're gonna do that. We're gonna do return, and then just like we did up here, redirect URL for patients, or sorry, redirect URL for, mm, let me copy this right here, and then paste this, um, redirect URL for uh, index right here. So we're gonna go to that function name, and a flash is essentially just a message. So this message is going to be, is going to be displayed on index. Um, well, actually it's gonna be displayed in main.html, which corresponds to the index function. And actually the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna go ahead to our base.html, which um, actually has code that's found in all of their HTML pages. And we're going to add some other code in order to make that happen. So this is gonna be in our templates folder. Um, we're gonna to go to base.html and we're going to create a kind of a, a new block in our in the head section of our HTML, of our um, base.html file. So you can see with messages equals get flash messages. So what's important to note actually is that part of the reason why we're using this templating system and not just plain HTML is that we can do things like create uh, variables. So what this is getting is all messages, or specifically get, getting all flashed messages. And this is a little bit of magic. When we specify flash in here, um, that gets added to um, get flashed messages. Or that gets added, well, that's get, that gets returned by get flashed messages. Um, so now if there are actually messages, if it's, if it's um, not empty, if messages, Um, we're going to display those messages as if they're a list. So we're going to have ul class equals flashes, which we can style later on using CSS. We just haven't done that yet. And then we're going to say for message uh, in messages using just a classic for loop in some Python syntax. Um, we're going to show a list li uh, message. So for each message there is. And then we are going to just end that for loop like this, like so. We're gonna end if right down here. And then we're going to end with, let's fix this up right here. And then end, uh, okay, cool, we've done that. Let's do enter and then let's go ahead and copy this just to save it a time, end with. Okay, so that's how that's gonna work. Um, I think what I also wanna do right here is I wanna add something that says, um, so if, not doctor. So if doctor is empty, um, we can just say flash doctor doesn't exist. We'll have to use uh, double. We'll have to use double quotes right there. Doctor doesn't exist, and then we're going to return redirect. Uh, URL for and get set and send the user back to the main page. All 
Okay. Um, so also for patients.html, let's just add some like quick HTML code, just so that we can like make sure that everything works the way it's supposed to instead of just showing a blank page. So we'll just do h1. And this is also where we're going to add our, lag, our logout functionality. Um, so we'll say h1, um, just patients page. Um, so let's go ahead and try this out. Um, we've kind of already done all of this, all of the major stuff for logging in. But we want to kind of um, give the user some messages if they haven't typed in the correct password or the um, doctor doesn't exist, the user doesn't exist. Um, and if they do, then we want to send them to the correct destination. And right down actually here, instead of just returning a message, um, successfully logged in, let's add a, an HTML page. So we're going to just take this render template right here. Return render template. And then, yeah, we'll just do patients.html. Okay, cool. So now that we've done that, um, okay. So let's go ahead and try it out. Uh, let's just go ahead and just, I don't think we need to restart our application, but we do need to um, refresh this right here. And so actually, I've already opened up um, this application right here that you've seen before. And we can see that there are two pieces of data in the database. Actually, this is for um, a different variation of this project. So let's go ahead and open up, actually, mm, Flask Vaccine Passport right there. And we've just got John right here. Um, and I think I know what the password is. But if not, we'll have to see what happens. So OK, let's say john.html or john at gmail.com. And I think this is the password. OK, password was incorrect. Hmm. I'm just going to try this one more time, and if not, we're just going to create a new user. Uh, maybe it was John. Okay, it was John. So that takes us to the patient page. Um, if not, we had password was incorrect. Um, and we'll have to find a way to get rid of this flash message. Yeah, actually, so if we just refresh at that particular point in time, it's gone. Um, We'll probably add some CSS or JavaScript in a, in a future, in the next tutorial in order to kind of clean that up a bit. But that's the basic functionality. Um, let's try like just adding a user that doesn't exist and see whether that works. Submit. And we get a message, doctor doesn't exist. And so now we can go ahead and try to log in, john at gmail.com, and then john and submit. Cool, okay. Um, I think probably what will happen is we will, um, on this patient's page, the idea is we're going to have a list of all the patients associated with the doctor and add in vaccine doses for them. We'll also probably have a link that sends them back to the home page and you know kind of refreshes that so you won't see those flash messages like we do right now. Oh, okay, it's gone in that instance. Um, but okay, so now that we've done that, what we want to do is we want to build in the um, logout functionality. So let's go ahead and let's do that. So let's go back to views.py. Um, and what, what we want to do is we want to build a route that we can go to in order to log out. Um, so how we're going to do this is when the user goes to um, patients.html, they should have a link that will allow them to click well, click and just straight up log out. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to inherit um, the, H the um, JavaScript and any CSS that's attached to base.html right here. And that's going to include our, our flash message functionality. So that's going to be kind of global. Um, actually, you know what? I think we're probably going to leave out the um, flash message stuff for now, but we do want to take the CSS with us. So let's go ahead and do this right here. Mm, patients of HTML. Let's see how that's going to look. Okay, eh, we don't really need this right that right it's right at this point. So we'll go right here, and we're just going to kind of take in everything but the messages stuff at this point in time, and we'll add all of this right here. Basically, what we had before. Okay, cool. All right, so we've got that going on. Um, and now what we want to do is, I think in content, like again, we're going to make this a little prettier later on. Um, but I think what we want to do is in content, we want to add um, a logout link. All right. It's going to be in <laughs> div ID content. And then we will just add uh, a href equals. Um, URL for logout doctor and we need to close that up. Let's see if we got a message here. 
Okay, and then we need to, yeah, there we go. Then we're gonna have a, a piece of text that says log out. And I'm sure there is, okay. I imagine this is turning red because we haven't created a logout a logout doctor function yet. Um, okay, this is also red as well. Well, four. Oh, okay, it should all be enclosed in quotes. That's the other issue. Okay, cool. So now that we've done this, let's see how this translates to um, a route in use.py. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this up in the next file. And we're going to create um, app .route, um, logout doctor uh, methods equals post. Well, actually, it's going to be get because we're going to go straight to this link right here. We're not making a post request. We're going straight to the link that we've specified right here. Um, okay, actually. I didn't do this the right way. Um, I just kind of copied from base at HTML when in reality it's closer to what is in um, main and base at HTML. So actually we need to redo this. Okay, so I'm actually gonna get rid of this and then I'm gonna go right down here and it's gotta look something more like, um, more like this. So we're gonna have all of this. Um, we're gonna have extends block.content Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to get rid of pretty much. Okay, hold on. Okay, end with. So this is actually the way it should be. Let's get a patience at HTML. And we're going to post this. And then in block content, we're going to have something like this. It's going to be end block. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that in there. Okay, so how this is gonna work, let's go ahead and fold this in for a second, is so we're creating this route right here called logout doctor. And it's going to accept, I mean, we can let it accept a post method because you might need to log out in a variety of ways, but we're gonna also let it accept a get method. All right, get request, sorry, um, because we're just accessing it using a link right here. And then this logout doctor corresponds to the name of the function, um, which is going to be, let's go to app. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what this is going to do right here is correspond to um, a function called def logout doctor, logout underscore doctor. And here, we're going to do two things. First, so for every individual user that logs into our application, we're creating a session. Um, but when the user logs out, we want to remove them from that session. And the session is just a dictionary. So we're going to do session.pop um, and then doctor. And I'm going to type in none right here. And then we're going to return to the uh, main page. So return redirect index. So user will get logged out and then, so their session will be ended and then they will get sent back to the main page. Um, okay, cool. So all of this is gonna, like this is gonna be available when we go to patients, um, when you go to patients.html. And we're gonna do one other thing right here. So first of all, when we go to patients, we're going to just assume that doctor is null, so doctor equals none. We're going to create a variable like that. And if this session that we created exists, if session, no, we'll say doctor ID actually, because we're getting the doctor. If session doctor, so if that exists, um, we're going to do doctor equals session doctor. Let's say doctor ID. So this is going to set us up for being able to use um, the data in the database on the current doctor who's logged in to display patients. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and try, our, try out our logout functionality because it's kind of the last part of what we need to do. Um, so, okay, let's say we've got uh, John at, well, actually, let's go ahead and just for, just kind of refresh all this. 
um, let's say john at gmail.com and type in john. Mm, okay, okay I know in tag end. Okay, so let's go to patients.html. Okay, that's yeah, got to be end block right there. So let's go back, let's kind of refresh things. John at gmail.com. We've got John right here. And then let's submit that. Okay, and we've got a logout link right here. Um, so let's go ahead and log out. And I'm pretty sure, okay, that seems to have worked. Um, and that's our logout function, LD. So far, it seems to have worked. We'll test it in more depth, depth and work with um, this session variable for doctor um, at a later point. You might actually modify it so it just doesn't hold the ID, but it holds more data with regards to the doctor. But right now, I just wanted to get a basic um, login, logout uh, piece of functionality working on the application. Um, there are more sophisticated ways to do this, but I kind of wanted to stick to the simplest way, which uses a lot of like just built-in functionality in Flask in order to demonstrate this, because ultimately this whole series of tutorials is, got, is, um, is directed towards learners. Now, if you are a more advanced user, there are Flask libraries called, I believe there's like React, let's go ahead and do a Google search. I believe there is, sorry, not React, Flask session. So there's this library, and I believe there's like a fairly, um, there's also Flask login as well. And again, these are probably used more often um, uh, in more professional applications. So, you know, this can handle logging, logging in, logging out, and then dealing with, um, with sessions. Um, but for this kind of like simple application, just to kind of demonstrate how things work under the hood, I, th I think this is sufficient. Um, anyways, I hope this is useful to you. And our next tutorial will be kind of building on this logon logout functionality and then building out patients.html, um, including adding patients. So kind of get this functional in the context of patients. Anyways, have a nice day.